When an ethnomusicologist is asked what role music serves in an African society, the answer inevitably involves a discussion of social institutions, life cycle rights, history, and a host of other factors that integrate music into society. Thus, one cannot simply talk about African music, it must be experienced. In this presentation, we will show that music is pervasive in Vi society. Music performed in several different contexts by those who have nurtured its continuity to the present day. The oldest republic in Africa, Liberia, was founded by immigrant Afro-Americans sent by private colonization societies to settle along the coast during the early part of the 19th century. The settlers brought with them the ideas and forms of artistic and intellectual expression prevalent in the 19th century society they knew in America. These traditions continued with their descendants. The rich cultural heritage of the ethnic groups already inhabiting the region was, for the most part, ignored. Today, beyond the cities and towns, remnants of the past have lingered on into the present. The people are Vi. They live in the northwest corner of Liberia, 60 miles from the capital of Monrovia. This region is Africa as everyone dreams it. The coastal plain, a scenic lake, dense tropical rainforests, and picturesque sunsets are a panorama of nature's beauty. Through art, dance and music. Vi people cling to the ways of the past. Their music and dance are a reflection of the communal spirit. Tombo, or dance, has an important role in a wide range of social activities, providing performance opportunities for old and young, male and female, chief and commoner, and amateur and professional. Whether associated with ritual ceremony, communal recreation, or masquerades, dance is a profound expression of one's self within the wider social spectrum. Dance brings into one setting much of what the Vi consider artistic. Through a sense of obligation to their communities, carvers, costume makers, instrumentalists, and dancers devote their talents to maintenance of the social order. Without their collaborative efforts, these activities could not occur. A knowledge of the traditional technology governing design and acoustics is required of instrument makers. Some musicians desire total control of the construction. Therefore, they design and make their own instruments. Many boast that it is they who give it birth and make it speak. Boikai Kamara, a master musician from the town of Konjak, works diligently constructing this conical-shaped drum called sangba. With tools fashioned by the town blacksmith and others of Western manufacture, he uses methods taught to him by his father. Taking out the inner core of the log is an enduring task. Once the outside bark is removed, the log is shaped in a conical fashion, similar to that of the mortar used by women to prepare foodstuffs. The Sangba is believed to have Ghana, a divine power bestowed by ancestor drummers. In addition, musicians acquire amulets from local medicine men to further enhance the power of the instrument.
The hide of the diker, Foling Tonga, or a domestic sheep is tanned and carefully attached to the drum shell. Rope made from fiber of palm leaves secures the head to the drum. In the past, a man's musical prowess was exhibited with the sungbot. Since they are played in such small numbers today, sungbot players enjoy a high prestige status in their communities. The drum is thoroughly tested for resonance and clarity of tone. Both are key factors for drumming in the dance and speech modes. In the dance mode, improvised rhythms are matched with the movements of dancers. In the speech mode, imitation of the high and low pitches and relative durations of the tone language permit the transmission of signals and commands. Great care is taken to ensure the aesthetic beauty of dancers. Making a costume is often done in secret, secluded areas, especially in the Sunday society where women design and maintain the costumes for the initiate dancers called Tomboke Bonianu and the spirit impersonator Zoba. The Sunday or Bundu mask is perhaps the most well-known piece of art in the region. The care and preservation of the male masqueraders is the task of men's associations called bonji. As part of the socialization process, exposure to dance begins at an early age. During childhood, dance games and play songs help establish self-esteem and bridge the gap between the child's home and the outside world. A knowledge of children's games and dances is a social asset, helping a child to be an accepted member of his own age group. At this age, concepts about male and female dance roles are learned. Girls' dances seem naturally less physical, often depicting female occupational duties. Boys display masculine attributes, frequently involving leadership roles and acts of strength. Two secret societies, Poro for men and Sunday for women, provide formal dance training for initiates. In the Sunday society, a special troupe is organized for initiates who show a strong aptitude for dancing. For periods of up to three years, Dancers are trained by the master teacher who bears the title Kingai. She is an itinerant professional musician who spends seven to 10 days per month instructing the initiate dancers. As the chief musician of Sunday, she uses the sasa to lead the musical ensemble consisting of additional instrumentalists and chorus singers. For the girls, training can be quite rigorous. Besides possessing the requisite physical skills, each initiate must learn the choreographed movements, interpret the complex speech surrogates of the sasa, and improvise dance patterns effectively. Dance dramas depicting various aspects of social life are a key feature in public performances. This drama depicts the various stages of a hunting expedition. It follows with startling detail the series of events as told by real life male hunters. The two lead dancers play the roles of the master hunter and his main associate. Armed with toy spears and rifles, they stalk the prey. The dancer standing on a map represents the forest, 
and the second dancer on hands and knees is the prey. To dramatize the kill, a toy weapon must be thrown onto the mat. Several unsuccessful attempts are made. The next attempt is successful. But hunters are cautious, making certain the prey is dead. This is a time for a celebration. The master hunter proclaims victory over the prey by leading his associates in a grand procession through the town. A performance of dance drama constitutes only a portion of the repertoire. Highly stylized dances showcase the skills acquired during the lengthy period of training. Improvisatory skills are displayed in a wide range of dazzling executions by individual dancers. At political rallies, national holiday celebrations, and secret society ceremonies held throughout Vi country, Sunday dance troops are called to provide entertainment. After graduation, the girls may remain active in music. Some continue to dance with troops sponsored by the public schools, while others aspire to become professional singers and dancers. Due to the impact of Western educational systems and new religious orientations, the Vi Poro Society has suffered a drastic decline. Today, the Wusa dance troupe is seldom seen in Vi country. But the elders say that at the turn of the century, these troops overwhelmed audiences with their astounding acrobatic exhibitions. To gain a perspective on the Wusa troupe, we visit the neighboring Gola, where this dance form continues as an important part of Poro training. This graduation ceremony features a troupe trained by the music and dance instructor, whom the boys call Kembe, meaning uncle. A master musician and dancer of extraordinary talent, he is especially adept at playing the hard, driving rhythms of the large slit gong, Gin. The Kembe is assisted by two musicians, an apprentice playing a subordinate rhythmic line on a smaller gin, and a bang-bang player who supports the ensemble with a constant underlying pulse pattern. Dazo, the sacred head of Poro activities, and his assistants proudly observe the performance. Bogboke, Kogba, Bolosuan, and Kuala Kuala. These are just a few of the many movements that young dancers must master during periods of training which may last a full four years. During the weeks immediately following graduation, Wusa troops travel to towns throughout the region to display their performance skills. The most proficient dancers are recruited by the government-sponsored regional and national cultural troops. Dance is an important element in community life. This age-old procession is called Manja Tombo, or Chief's Dance. At funeral feasts, it is performed by mourners while en route to the home of the deceased. Although the procession is ostensibly associated with a funerary rite, it harks back to a much earlier tradition 
when a town or chieftain paid homage to its political leaders. Even today, the chief and male elders lead the procession in an arrangement which reflects the political hierarchy of the town. In the Mako, a competitive dance, women cheer one another as they attempt to match skills with an expert male musician. As an avenue of social expression, Mako mirrors some of the basic conflicts and rivalries between women and men. But in this male-dominated society, dance is one area of life where women believe they are on an equal level with men. The male musician, Seku Bonda, taunts female dancers. Women attempt to throw him off rhythm with unsuspected movements. The intricate rhythms of the JK rattles and the pulsating drive of the box-shaped kongama awaken the perceptions and feelings that are translated into culturally patterned movements. The most popular communal dance, Ngake, is also cast in the spirit of competition. The day before this performance, one woman declared that with the blessings of God, no man would outdance her. To perform Ngake, women line one side of the dance arena and men the other. A single female dances to the center and executes a series of improvised movements. She then proceeds to the men's side and with a simple gesture, challenges an opponent to match her performance. The challenge is accepted by the male dancer and the cycle continues. Shouts of praise and adulation follow an excellent performance. Inge is frequently performed at other social occasions, including harvest celebrations, national holiday festivities, and marriage ceremonies. It has no time limit, and performances may continue through the night. A chief may order a performance of Inge after a local tragedy to remove the sorrow which has fallen on the community. Surrounded by family and friends in a socially cohesive atmosphere, the music, the singing, the excitement, there comes relief from the toil and hardship of everyday life. In the past, towns competed on a regional level. Around the Piso Lake region, Nge festivals were held in the historic town of Bindu, which became an important dance center. Legends and stories about great dancers remain a part of Vai folklore. The epitome of dancing skill is found among professional masqueraders. After careful screening and several months and often years of training, a masquerader is allowed to appear in public performances. Special initiatory and consecration rituals mark each stage of a dancer's development. Young men and women who had experience performing in a secret society initiate dance troupe are likely candidates for this profession. 
Highly stylized dance movements, songs, and rhythms are prescribed for each masquerader. Trained attendants follow the dancers. They assist in crowd control, adjust a disarrayed raffia costume, and shout the masquerader's praises. As itinerant entertainers, masqueraders perform for a variety of ceremonial and recreational activities. Zoba, the spirit impersonator of the women's Sunday society, is the most feared masquerader. Because of her control of powerful medicines, men fear her most. There are strict rules governing men's behavior when Zoba is present. Violations against the mask can result in a monetary fine or a number of other Sunday reprisals. Fear of the Zoba is also attributed to its awesome, terrifying appearance. The color black is a symbol of the unknown in the Vi aesthetic. Therefore, some men consider the Zoba an evil, sinister force and have used their political and religious powers to ban it. Zoba dancing is described as the hot dance style because of the high bursts of energy common to the performance and tight dance style due to the short, rapid foot movements. Mime and other dramatic movements are common traits of Zoba dance. Studies indicate that this is the only mask worn by women in Africa. Masks worn by men were brought to Vai country during the early part of this century from the neighboring Mende and Gola areas. Unlike the Zoba, these dancers have no spiritual importance. They are professional entertainers who hold membership in an itinerant professional ensemble consisting also of singers and drummers. Groups of men may raise money to sponsor a masquerader, hoping there will be a return on their investment as the dancer travels and performs for pay. The most common of the male masquerades is Nafai, otherwise known as the Frisky Devil. Quick, energetic, acrobatic movements characterize his style. Jumping and leaping movements are used to enthrall audiences. These displays bring handsome dashes, monetary rewards for an excellent performance. On occasion, the Nafai may perform astounding feats on rooftops and on ropes suspended high in the air. Bowu, Mr. Tall so-called because of his ability to change height from four to 10 feet with one quick motion. The most common movement of the Bowu 
is this prolonged rotational movement interspersed with changes in height. It is also known for other daring and awesome feats, including dancing with a lighted torch held inside the dry raffia and extinguishing fires with the mighty turbulence created by his costume. The majestic masked dancer, Yavi, first appeared in Vai country a few years before World War I. His costume is by far the most colorful and impressive of the male masqueraders. The mask resembles the crowns of British royalty. The costume is made of heavy tiered layers of raffia. But despite its weight, masterful dancers can perform quick, agile movements. In Northwest Liberia, music and dance continues. This brief look at the Vi has allowed us to peer into the heart and soul of a people. For centuries, music and dance have been a central element in their lives. The traditions are a source of pride to the old people and a cornerstone of hope and affirmation for the young. The African music scholar Francis Bebe has put it this way. African music is not meant just for the ears, but for all the senses and faculties of the body. It reflects Africa's vision of the world on earth and the world beyond, a world of change and movement, a world in permanent search for betterment and perfection. It is music that demands total attention, total absorption, and receptivity to the supernatural. The purpose of African music is action, with the dance not an end in itself, but a kind of transition, a springboard to help the body fulfill the mission assigned to it. 